So I was going over the comments for the latest Hyperloop video, which is a mixed bag going from the unbelievably stupid uh, to the really quite funny. Okay, so first let's try some dumb. Now you'll remember, my objection to Elon Musk's test is he was going to run a stripped down electric car in a tube in a city, knowing it had about as much energy as a truck going at 60 miles per hour. And all that was going to hold it was this skinny rail, which seemed kind of reckless to me. Especially when he's saying himself that it could easily end up a shredded metal. Doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to be doing in a city. So let's see some awesome defense from the Elon Musk fans. I might be blind or dumb, but where did Elon say he'd use the track in the city? But of course, no sooner than that, than we have this for a reply. Nowhere that I've seen, I think Mr. Foot has made an assumption. Not a good look for a scientist. Oh, really? You see, I try not to bring this stuff up too often because folks say this stuff gets repetitive. But seriously, dude, I've made loads of videos on this. I've actually been in person to both Hyperloop test tracks. Elon Musk's rusty tube outside SpaceX headquarters in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, that's one way of leveling it. Are they still out? That's bizarre. So that one's mounted up. This one's missing completely. They're missing completely on every second one. And the whole thing is just bedded down on rubber. That might not even be rubber. It might be equal plywood or something. I think, as you see, it's down. The whole tube is rusted on the inside. I don't think they quite realize when they put the concrete in there, there was nowhere to give the water to get out. So the whole thing is completely rusted up on the inside. The other one belongs to Hyperloop One, which was recently purchased by Richard Branson. I mean, Virgin um, has gone into the Hyperloop business. Um, and we've invested in the company that is in uh, the lead as far as developing Hyperloop, which will now be called Virgin Hyperloop. Uh, it'll be a train that um, goes into a tunnel uh, that levitates mag on, on magnetic levitation um, and will travel at speeds of uh, over 600 miles an hour. I was completely blown away. I mean, I think, um, uh, you know, it's just, it's strange just going out into the Las Vegas desert and seeing this enormous tunnel running, running across the desert. And that is the entire Hyperloop. Well, of Hyperloop 1 anyway. Which is especially funny when you watch the videos of their acquisition and it looks like they really don't have a good idea of what they've bought. Think about broadband. At the heart of it is a network that has digital packets that go very fast. Three types of packets, data, voice, and video. And again, the internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. Think about Hyperloop. At the heart of it is a network with three types of physical packets. Packets of people, packets of freight, packets of car that can all go on a very fast pipe or con connection that can go first mile to last mile in an autonomous way. We believe it's the emergence of physical broadband. Now, neither of these tubes can be sensibly expanded because one of them is in the middle of a city and the other one has a road at one side and a mountain range at the other. Huge facility that will undoubtedly be the uh, future of transport for the entire planet that can only go not... <laughs> As far as it's quite funny actually. So this is just the access road. The focus is that's the access road just for the power line. And that is the entire hyperloop. Well, of hyperloop one anyway. So once you've got the pod into the tube, all it can do is go up and down that one kilometer tube like a really limited model train set. And really limited is what I'm talking about here. Because with both of these test tracks, you can only load and unload a pod from one end of the track. Now, I kind of figured that the audience knew some of this because I made loads of videos about it. 
What? Seriously? You not knowing that Elon Musk only has one test track is evidence that I'm not a good scientist. Or how did you say? Not a good look for a scientist. Actually, I'm pretty certain that getting things right is a good look for a scientist. Just sad. But whatever. Let me just add this, that the rust loop is not the only place that Elon Musk could test his stripped down electric car. <clears throat> Sorry, Hyperloop test pot, because stripping down a car totally makes it not a car. Yeah, he could do the testing where other people tend to do their speed tests. On the salt flats. This past week in the Utah desert, a rocket looking vehicle. But I know what you're thinking. Surely no electric car, even one where they've taken out the driver and so forth, could possibly get up to half the speed of sound. Actually, no. The current high speed record for an electric car with a driver is over 350 miles per hour. The Venturi Buckeye Bullet 3 set a new world land speed record for an electric car. It clocked an average speed of 341 miles per hour and hit a top speed of 358 miles per hour. Faster than Elon Musk's amazing proposed Hyperloop speed test. Leading to this comical statement. The Colonel Clink, there's an Elon Musk disciple born every minute. And if you doubt that rather grim assessment, look no further than USA Today. Tech billionaire Elon Musk pans Hyperloop high-speed acceleration and braking test. Another day, yet another seemingly unbelievable announcement from tech billionaire Elon Musk. Damn, have some sense of perspective. You're cheering the man like he's just invented the wheel, rather than roll out a hundred-year-old idea, and then simply claimed it as his own because he gave it a new name. I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. But I, I'm thinking like maybe I should patent it and then offer to open source the patent to anyone that can make a credible case that they could actually do it. Yeah, because that's totally what tech geniuses do, you know. They take hundred year old ideas and then think they can patent them as their own. Mm, good luck with that. Leading to this awesome comment on my last video. Elon Musk reinventing the wheel by adding corners to it. Ah, uh, bravo. But let's just see if we can give USA Today a more accurate description of what Elon Musk intends to do. Like, Elon Musk intends to run a stripped down electric car, because they're totally new, you know, carrying no people, because cars that carry no people are much more useful, in a rusty tube, slower than an electric car where the driver can go. Yeah, amazing stuff, unbelievable. And before I come out with the top rated comment on the last Hyperloop video, <laughs> let me just throw this out just to show how the Hyperloop really does bring out the dumb in people. The American Enterprise Institute had a live stream on the Hyperloop last night. And this is someone legitimately arguing that a mode of transport that hasn't actually transported anyone yet, let alone, in fact, it's not transported any living thing yet, is actually amazing because it's not killed anyone yet some train company um <laughs> uh this isn't so much of a question but just an appeal uh as this new mode of transportation begins i work in a in a in an industry with a horrifying record yeah, oh yeah totally trains are a horrendously dangerous form of travel uh even in my own career there's been uh, six fatalities from trespassers I've been to the funeral of a colleague who died in the service of the railroad. And Hyperloop has never had a fatality. That's it. And it's possible that we could go to the end of our lifetimes where a new mode of transportation finally gets humanity to be beyond uh, uh, deadly transportation. Uh, dude, you do realize that you don't have to have a new form of transport. There is nothing magical about a new form of transport that means it can be completely safe. <laughs> The animal is inside out. I heard that. 
turned inside out? And it exploded. You could say, for instance, just improve the safety record of existing modes of transport. Because honestly, I think transporting people at nearly supersonic speeds inside a vacuum tube that is immensely vulnerable might be difficult to get a perfect safety record on something like that. Do you believe that's possible? Yes, uh, that's definitely uh, nowhere the, the goal we have to reach. But the Hyperloop's going to be made out of thick steel, right? Yeah, steel that still needs interior struts to protect it from defamation. And of course, the top rated comment from Dave from EEV Blog, who I strongly recommend as he also does some awesome debunkings of pseudoscience boondoggles. Based on a few seconds I had at the beginning of the video. You can't just drop a cool 20 micron nozzle image at the start and not tell us. That's just mean. Which, yeah, it is cool in almost every sense because the liquid coming out of that nozzle is liquid ammonia. Now, ammonia is a pretty decent gas at room temperature and only liquefies at about minus 30 Celsius. But it gets cooler than that because this jet's not going into air. It's going into an almost space-like vacuum and it's doing it at over 100 miles per hour, which is curiously also over 100 kilometers per hour. And also, it's seen through a microscope, because that jet there is about the thickness of a human hair, about 20 microns or so, 20 millionths of a meter. I am at the point right now where I think Thunderfoot is the guy at the office who gets everyone else the coffee. Yeah, I know it might seem like almost nothing, but there is an absolute ballet of engineering and thermodynamics going on in this almost static looking image. Yeah, this isn't some sort of hyperloop promise of something that might be possible. That's actually working. And oddly enough, this isn't the, the end of this experiment. This is just the first part of it. You see, that 20 micron jet is going to get hit by a micrometer sized X-ray beam coming out of a synchrotron that's going to smash some electrons off that ammonia. And then we're going to measure the energy of those electrons. Why? Well, long story, but the short one is because science. And while ammonia on its own might not actually be that interesting, it gets really interesting when you start adding electrons to it. Like so. Okay, so that was my rant on the comments from the last video. And yeah, there's no way I can seriously put this stuff into the Patreon supported feed because that's held over for the high quality stuff. Like uh, the next Patreon supported video will be pouring molten gold on a potato, which might seem a bizarre thing to do, but there's actually quite a lot of interesting stuff that comes out of pouring molten gold on a potato, especially if you want to see how valid this scene is. He says yes. You shall have a golden crown that men shall tremble to behold. Well, that was all I wanted. But hey, Game of Thrones is still awesome. Uh, but if you want to support this channel and want to support seeing molten gold being poured on a potato, I'll leave some links below.